Hello language learners and welcome to Finnish lesson number 24. In this lesson we'll study how to use and form the T plural, which is also called the nominative plural. Nominative is the basic form of the word, it's sometimes also called the dictionary form. In the plural form it takes the ending T, which is the topic of this video. Let's start with the use of this form. When to use the T plural? You can use T plural as the plural subject of a sentence. In that case, it will appear at the beginning of a sentence. For example, Kissat nukkuvat paljon. The cats sleep a lot. Kissat nukkuvat paljon. Autot ovat parkkipaikalla. The cars are in the parking lot. Autot ovat parkkipaikalla. In spoken language, the verb is often used in the singular form, so we could also say Kissat nukkuu paljon. Kissat nukkuu paljon. Autot on parkkipaikalla. Autot on parkkipaikalla. T plural is also used when referring to all items. For example, kirjoitan viestit. I'll write the messages. Kirjoitan viestit. Syön porkkanat. I'll eat the carrots. Syön porkkanat. If you use the T plural, it implies that you are referring to all items. In other words, it means that you'll write all the messages and you'll eat all the carrots. T plural is also used with words that have only the plural form in Finnish or that come in pairs. For example, hat olivat ihanat. The wedding was wonderful. Hat olivat ihanat. Please note here that unlike in the English translation, the verb is in plural, hat olivat. We don't have the word ha in the meaning of a wedding. It's always hat when you want to refer to a wedding. The word ha does exist and it's used in compound words such as ha päivä, a wedding day, or ha puku, a wedding dress. So hat, a wedding, ha päivä, a wedding day, ha puku, a wedding dress. Let's see a few more examples. Hautajaiset ovat ensi viikolla. The funeral is next week. Hautajaiset ovat ensi viikolla. Missä oranssit sakset ovat? Where are the orange scissors? Missä oranssit sakset ovat? Hän ostaa uudet silmälasit. He'll buy new glasses. Hän ostaa uudet silmälasit. Let's read these sentences in Finnish once again. Häät olivat ihanat. Hautajaiset ovat ensi viikolla. Missä oranssit sakset ovat? Hän ostaa uudet silmälasit. Now there are some things to remember. With the question where the orange scissors are and the sentence he'll buy new classes, you probably notice the change in the adjectives orange and new. So basically, unlike in English, if the noun is in plural in Finnish, also the corresponding adjective is in plural. For example, oranssit sakset, orange scissors. Uudet silmälasit, new glasses. Mustat kissat, black cats. Punaiset autot, red cars. Another thing to remember is that we don't use T plural after numbers. So if you want to say I have two black cats, you would use the partitive. Minulla on kaksi mustaa kissaa. Or if you want to say they have three red cars, you'll say heillä on kolme punaista autoa. In these cases we'll use the partitive case. We'll learn more about that in the upcoming videos. Next, let's see how the T plural is formed. You know by now that Finnish has six verb types. 
Well, the nouns, adjectives, pronouns and numerals can also be divided into different groups. Each word has the dictionary form, a stem, vartalo in Finnish, and some words have two stems. The way Finnish works is that we add case endings, also called suffixes, to the stem of the word to convey different meanings. When forming the T-plural, it's often as easy as simply adding the letter T at the end of the word. For example, auto, car, the stem is auto, and we'll add T, autot. So the letter T is the marker of the plural in a similar way as the letter S is in the English language. Autot, cars. Please note that if there is an adjective referring to the word, it will also take the T. For example, vanha auto, an old car, vanhat autot, old cars. Let's see a few more examples. Kissa, kissat. Puu, puut. Syy, syyt. Seinä, seinät. However, adding a case ending in a word often causes changes to the stem of the word. Let's see what kind of changes may happen when we add the T. First, let's see what happens with words ending in letter E. For example, huone, a room. The stem is huone, so we'll add one extra E there. And then after that, as usual, we add the T plural marker. So it would be huone, huoneet. Vene, veneet. Kone, koneet. Perhe, perheet. Another common word type are words ending with nen. And let's see what happens with them. The basic form, for example, for the word Red is punainen. The stem is punaise. So what happens here is we'll take away nen and replace it with se. And then we'll add the t to the stem. So we'll have punaiset. Sininen, siniset. Aikuinen. Aikuiset. Nainen. Naiset. One word type which has several subcategories are the words ending with the letter I. So let's take a look at these. We have new words ending with the letter I. It's really easy to form the T plural with these words because you simply add the T at the end of the word. A bus. Bussi, bussit. A course, kurssi, kurssit. A game or a match. Peli, pelit. Orange, oranssi, oranssit. These are all new words ending with letter I. And this group is growing because there are and there will be new words entering the Finnish language. Another subcategory are the old words ending with SI, C. These are old words and there won't be any new words coming into this group. What happens here with the stem is that the ending C is replaced with D. So the word new, uusi, has a stem, uude, and the plural is uudet. So it's uusi. Uudet. A year, vuosi, vuodet. Water, vesi, vedet. A hand, käsi, kädet. The words belonging to this group are quite common, so you will hear them a lot. 
and hopefully that will then help you to learn them quicker. Then we have two more groups of old words ending in the letter I. Nimi, a name. The stem is Nime. So the I is replaced with the letter E. And the plural is Nimet. Nimi, Nimet. A door. Ovi, Ovet. A winter. Talvi, Talvet. A finger. Sormi, Sormet. And yet one more group with old words ending in I. Also with this group, the stem ends with the letter E. But the difference with this is that these words take a different partitive case, which we'll study later. So that's why they are put in the different categories already now. So we have a language or a tongue. Kieli, kielet. Small, pieni, pienet. Big, suuri, suuret. A voice or a sound. Ääni, äänet. Now, when you learn a new word that ends with the letter I, it's really difficult to know to which group it belongs to, unless you are sure that it's a new loan word. But don't be discouraged by these changes. The more you use and encounter Finnish words in context, the more familiar you'll become with these patterns. There is one more change that we'll take a look at in this video, and this is the KPD change. The nouns and adjectives undergo KPD change just like the verbs do. Let's see examples. If the basic form has a double consonant of K, P or T, in the stem that is reduced to one consonant only. For example, a bank, panki, pankit. A shop, kauppa, kaupat. A girl, tyttö, tytöt. The KPT change also happens in these forms. A foot, jalka, jalat. Bread, leipä, leivät. A street, katu, kadut. A city, kaupunki, kaupungit. So in all these cases, you can see that the T plural is the weak form, which means that there is less K, P or T than in the basic form. Whereas there are other words in which the T plural takes the strong form. These are words ending with the letter E or with a consonant. Let's see a few examples of these. Medicine. Lack. The plural is lääkkeet. So here the KPT change is reverse. The basic form has only one K, so it's the weak form. And then the stem has the strong form, lääkke. And the T plural is formed by adding the T at the end of the stem, lääkkeet. A boot, saapas, saapa. A piece of clothing, vaate, vaateet. A test or an exam, koe, kokeet. A toe, varvas, varpaat. Rain, sade, sateet. A tire, rengas, rengas. As you can see, in all these cases, the T plural has the strong form of KPT. So there's more KPT than in the basic form. At this point, it's important to note that there are many other word types too. While it may seem like a lot to take in, 
remember that you can take it one step at a time. And as you continue to learn and practice, you'll become more familiar with these word types and many more to come. To finish off, let's take a look at some example sentences to help you remember when and how to use the T plural. Let's read them together in Finnish. Kadut ovat täynnä ihmisiä. Kadut ovat täynnä ihmisiä. Hyvät ystävät ovat tärkeitä. Hyvät ystävät ovat tärkeitä. Lapset leikkivät pihalla. Lapset leikkivät pihalla. Voisitko kuoria nämä omenat? Voisitko kuoria nämä omenat? Tänään siivoan kaapit. Tänään siivoan kaapit. Hän ostaa liput huomenna. Hän ostaa liput huomenna. Haluan tehdä kaikki tehtävät. Haluan tehdä kaikki tehtävät. This is all about the T plural. I hope you find this helpful and if you have any questions, please let me know them in the comments. Have a wonderful day and bye for now.